Hi, and welcome back to Engine Shop Joe. Uh, today I wanted to talk about the 559 fault, which is fuel pressure, and 2343, which is also a fuel pressure fault that you may not see as often. And I wanted to talk about them because that is a, a highly asked question on my channel. A lot of people uh, want to discuss why they have low fuel pressure. So I just wanted to go over these two faults and make sure you understood the difference between them. And then to keep the video reasonably short, I will go over the fault snapshot for this, uh, these faults in the next video after this one. So let's get going and take a look. So in all fault snapshots, you have a first occurrence and a last occurrence. And here you can see those two columns. And there could be 10,000 faults, but you're always going to have just the first occurrence and the last occurrence. And these are snapshots. And because we're talking about 2343 and 559 fuel pressure, that's the only two that I have on here. And I just brought up some, the what I think is the more very important uh, snapshot, parts of the snapshot that we want to look at. So 2343, let's look at just first occurrence. The rail commanded was 35,799, but measured was only 34,604. The uh, engine was not able, the fuel system on the engine was not able to, to make the 35,700 pounds for probably 15 or 20 seconds. And so if it can't get there and it's doing everything that it can, then it'll log the 2343 fault. And if you have a partially restricted fuel filter, this can be what happens. It just can't get there when it's trying to make that pressure. Now, the bad thing about fault snapshots is not everything that you can see on a data logger, you can see in a snapshot. You can only see what the engineers basically wanted you to see or thought you needed to see. Uh, so we don't know what the pump was doing, how hard it was working, how the, how the, uh, the pulse width, the current, all that. We don't know what that was. Now, let's go down and look at the 559 fault, straight below first occurrence. We were commanding 34,000, but we could only make 30,000 at that point. Now, you can see that um, we had over 4,000 pounds difference. So that caused us to log a 559 instead of the 2343. So the problem appears to be getting progress progressively worse. And I want you to look farther down below that purple line I've got on there. And that's a couple other items from the snapshot that I brought in. I wanted you to see that we were at about 1400 RPM. So we're into peak torque. Notice that uh, on the first snapshot, we were at maximum fueling. And on the second snapshot, we were at maximum throttle. But the, the accelerator pedal or lever, or the throttle pedal, was he had it pushed right against the floor 100%. And percent of load or the amount of electronic throttle, if you will, that the engine or the ECM is, is commanding to the fuel system was at 99 and 100%. So in this snapshot, we're not going to be able to have enough data to understand a difference between the maximum fueling and maximum throttle. But in the next video, I'll be able to easy, more easily explain that to you. So I wanted you to notice the important things are with the 2343, you're only just a little bit off on that fuel pressure, about 1,000 pounds, maybe 2,000. Once you get over about 3,500 PSI, between commanded and measured for over 15 or 30 seconds. It depends. It's got to be more than just an instant. You'll log the 559. And something's going on. We got to figure out why. I've got a, a couple videos coming up in the very near future that are going to blow your mind about uh, this fuel pressure thing and a problem we had. And we finally, we worked on it for weeks. Uh, we finally got it figured out. So you'll, you'll love that one, I think. Okay, so uh, let's move on and finish this. Now, there's a couple things I wanted you to see here that I think are important, and then we'll be we'll wrap this up. Uh, 
you can see they've been resetting fault codes. Look to the far right column at the top. There's 66 hours, then below that 267 hours, then 646 hours. So they were struggling with this fault from somewhere around uh, 300 hours to current. And when I got involved, the they had just got done clearing the fault 66 hours ago. And that's a, that's a week and a half of driving, so it wasn't very long. And they did an injector barcode trim adjustment, so they reset all the injectors and hope, I guess, that that was the problem. But I, that, uh, that wasn't. So uh, I'm not sure why they did that. Uh, this was done at another facility. And then um, they also did some ECM diagnostic tests. It doesn't tell me which one, but I'm guessing fuel pressure tests, that kind of thing. The important thing for us to see is down below, I want you to look at rail pressure commanded and measured. So the section that I inserted below the audit trail is part of the snapshot that was made when we made the ECM image with Cummins Insight software. And when we make that image, we always do it with the engine not running because then we can check all the static values of all the sensors. We can also check to see if the fuel system is able to maintain pressure when the engine's not running. And rail pressure measured was close to 6,000 pounds. So the system was doing a very good job of maintaining rail pressure. So at this point, I'm not ready to blame excessive leakage in the system for the actual fault that we have of the the low fuel pressure, the 559 and the, the 2343. In other words, it could just be plug filters. It could be some other problem. It could be a sensor issue, but I don't think mechanically we have a problem. Uh, I say that because experience wise, I've seen engines that lose all the fuel pressure in two or three seconds uh, when you turn the key on and do this, it's down at zero, and the engine runs just fine. We don't log any fuel pressure faults. So uh, in the next video, we're going to get into the fault snapshot, and uh, hopefully you'll understand more about it after we get done with that video.